Months from Ben's Wild Adventure. Now, you've seen me on my show on YouTube, and one reason why I do this show is because I love animals ever since I was a kid. And as a, especially when I was a little kid, I used to watch this show on Playhouse Disney called Stanley that really sparked my interest in animals. And I also used to watch The Most Extreme a lot on Animal Planet, and I watched Zaboomafu and lots of other shows too. I was kind of really obsessed with those three because every every weeknight I would watch the most extreme at nighttime when I get when I get home from school while I'm brushing my teeth and stuff. I like Chris and Martin from Zabumafu, the Crap Brothers, and I liked seeing their other show, Crad's Creatures, and I watched another show they did called Be the Creature and um I think I might love animals just as much as Chris and Martin do. Sure learned a lot from them. And I also used to watch Bill Nye the Science Guy too. That had some science in it. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. The very first Ben's Wild Adventure episode I did was on the Nutria Rad. And so far the latest one, I'm, the latest one I've done so far is the Owl. And I definitely wanted to do the Blue Whale because that's the biggest animal that's ever lived. And I wanted to do two special ones. One, out west, which is not normally here because most of them take place here in, in New Hampshire, but the one out west with buffalo takes place, well, out west, like in Yellowstone National Park. And York's Wild Adventure, that was another special episode. I've been to that zoo like a million times. Even when I was a, a little kid once, we went to that zoo um, there were a lot more elephants there when I was a kid. We even rode on an elephant, me, my sister, my dad. And I remember, le I remember when we were leaving the zoo when I fell down and cut my leg. Well, the Yorks Wild Kingdom one was pretty fun, but the really special one was doing the one about bison out west because when me and my family went out west just last summer, we saw a lot of bison out out there. There were so many of them. Makes sense because they're very common out there and they're the biggest land animals in all of North America and it was really amazing on how close we could get to them. They didn't charge or anything and um, they they did kind of look like giant hairy cows but because uh, they're related to cows but but they're far more dangerous than cows obviously. And we saw a lot more than just bison out west. We saw moose, elk, brown bear, black bear, pronghorn antelope. It was really cool. I think we also saw mule deer. And, but seeing the bison out there was by far my favorite because as I've never seen them before. In the wild, that is. It was, it was really amazing and What's cool about bison is that they may not be as big as elephants, but like I said, they're the biggest land animals in all North America. They're like 
13 feet long, seven feet tall, weigh two tons and have horns two feet long. And there's actually, I also said in the show that there were two different types. There's the American bison, which I saw out west. And there's the European bison, which lives in Europe. And I even mentioned some pet bison and a bison mascot named Ralphie and a prehistoric bison called the Step Bison. So it's a pretty cool episode. So here it is. Hey, me again. Today I'm gonna to be doing a special Ben's Wild Adventure episode on the American bison. I'm here out west at Grand Teton National Park. And as you can see, there's a herd of bison behind me. The American bison is also known as the American buffalo, and it is the largest land animal in all of North America. It's 13 feet long, seven feet tall, weighs two tons, and its horns are two feet long. And there's actually two different species of bison. There's the American bison, which lives in North America, and the smaller European bison, which lives in Europe. At Yellowstone National Park, right here are two bison. This is really close. I've never been that close before. Now, normally these guys are dangerous, but we can coexist with them, and we're coexisting peacefully. See, this is peacefulness. We're all just standing here, and the bisons are just sitting here. They're not attacking us. They don't, they don't see us as a, as a threat or mean us any harm. Isn't that right, Mr. Buffalo? <laughs> He's looking at us, Dad. Bison are the only megafauna left on Earth. Back during the last ice age, there used to be lots of megafauna, like the mammoths and the prehistoric steppe bison, which stood eight feet tall, weighed two tons, had horns five feet long, and from horn tip to horn tip, the horns were 10 feet wide. But now, the American bison's the only one left, and there is a, a bison for the mascot, there's, there is a bison that's a mascot for the University of Colorado called Ralphie. They're juvenile bison and they come and go. And there's even been some pet bison. There's one couple that owns two bison, a male named Wild Thing and a female, I can't remember her name though. And there's another couple that owns a male bison named Bailey and he rides in the back of their car. As a matter of fact, they actually removed the roof of the car and took everything out of the back of the car so he could fit inside. There's a huge herd of buffalo right here, and there's some calves in the herd. The herd usually follows the lead cow. If any predators like wolves come by, the lead cow will move to protect the calves from, from the predators. And look at all these calves. There's so many of them. They're lighter in color than their parents. There's lots of calves in this herd. There's lots of buffalo here. There's some over here, some way over there. Off in the distance, way over there too. Wow. Look at the ca Finally, buffalo calves. Look at all those calves. Here are some bison next to a geyser. They're grazing in the field, but they won't drink the water. The water's too hot. I think this was in Yellowstone National Park. Bison can run 40 miles an hour, and they have a clash force of 800 pounds per square inch. The next one is owls, and the owls was pretty was cool because we did it at nighttime. My first one to do it at night, and I also did it in memory of my dog Sally, who um, died this year on December 11th at 12 years old. You know, there was one cryptid I forgot to add in my episode about owls. Um, the Kikion. It's a cryptid in Africa. It's believed to be a giant owl, about five feet tall. It kind of is similar to the Owl Man and the Moth Man because they do kind of look like owls when they fly. Green horned owls have been known to attack humans, so owls can be dangerous. But I would, I suspect that that's probably just a territorial 
thing that they do, like maybe if, if they think their territory is being invaded, they might swoop down and try to scare off a human. And the one about owls is pretty interesting, so um, here it is. Hey, me again. I'm outside the Great Bay Wildlife Refuge, and I'm going to do my next Ben's Wild Adventure episode about owls. <laughs> now, owls are nocturnal, which is why it's getting close to nighttime, which is why we're out here near nighttime, because pretty soon the owls will be active. And there's many different types of owls. The ones we have here, there's great horned owls. There's also things like eagle owls, <laughs> eagle owls, <laughs> great gray owls, barn owls, Barred owls, <coughs> barred owls, <coughs> and burrowing owls and snowy owls. And the great horned owls, like I said, they're common here. They got a wingspan of five feet, and they have been known to attack humans, but that's probably just a territorial thing, maybe. Sometimes you can even hear them hooting at night, and owls have excellent night vision. They can see a hundred times better in the dark than we can. Compare that to sharks and cats, which can only see 10 times better, and to squids, which can see 200 times better. And what's interesting about owls is that owls can't move their eyes up, down, or side to side like we can, so they rotate their heads, and they can actually rotate their heads 270 degrees. That is much farther than we can. <laughs> Owls, like I said, are nocturnal. That means they're active at night. And there's even a species of monkey called the owl monkey because it's nocturnal just like an owl is and it's got eyes like an owl. It's the only nocturnal monkey in the world. And what's interesting about the barn owl is that the round shape of a barn owl's face actually directs sound to the ears. Some owls even use their ears like funnels to catch faraway sounds, and owls can fly around and about without making a sound, because they've got feathers on the ends of their wings that resemble hairs. That's, that's one reason why they can fly so quietly, and every owl has their own different calls. You know, a lot of owls, you hear them go, hoo hoo, especially the great horned owl, but the barred owl's call sounds like, who cooks for you, who cooks for you. Owls' cousins are eagles, hawks, falcons, and vultures. They're all birds of prey and they're all carnivores. You can tell they're carnivores because they have hooked beaks. All carnivorous birds have hooked beaks and the hook on the end of that beak is called a nail. It helps them cut into prey. And owls like to eat small rodents like mice and rats and they'll also eat bats too. And if it's small enough, they swallow it whole. But if it's larger, they gotta tear it apart. And what they can't digest, they just cough back up into owl pellets. Owl pellets are the things that owls cough up. If you look inside, you can see the remains of the animals that owls been eat have been eating, like small bones. Like you might find the bones of, like I said, rodents such as rats and mice, and even the bones of bats. You could probably even find the hand wing of a bat inside an owl pellet. Most owls live in trees. But the burrowing owl lives underground. It's that small owl that was in the movie Hoot. And that was based on the book Hoot. And the burrowing owl is very small compared to other owls. It's only like about a foot tall. There is a cryptid. Cryptids are animals like the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and the Abominable Snowman. There's a cryptid in... Europe, I think in England, called the Owl Man. Half man, half owl. Said to have a wingspan 10 feet wide and is 7 feet tall. It's very similar to another cryptid that's believed to live here in North America, the Moth Man. The Moth Man is said to be even larger. A wingspan 20 feet wide, 8 feet tall, and 250 pounds. The Moth Man is said to have 
huge glowing red eyes that glow in the dark, and it's said to reach unimaginable speeds, 100 miles an hour. Occasionally, we'll sometimes get snowy owls down here. The juveniles travel farther than the adults. They sometimes travel this far south. And as a matter of fact, most of the snowy owls that we think of that have the black stripes are actually the juveniles. Adults don't have any black stripes at all. They're all white. And normally, they live up in the Arctic where polar bears live, and they hunt these small rodents called lemmings. But in the winter, when it's cold enough, they'll come this far south because me and my family have taken pictures of them. Next episode I did was about pigs, and it's cool about that one. I wanted to do one on pigs because it, I mentioned this huge monster pig called Hogzilla in it. Ever since I first heard, of, heard about Hogzilla back in 2004 when he died, I've been obsessed with pigs ever since. Um, Hogzilla was really cool because he was so huge, and turns out he was actually a hybrid. And what's funny is, I, I, the, he's a cross between a domestic hamster and a wild boar, and what's funny is, in the clip, we did the Monty Python thing, your, your mother was, was a hamster and, and your, your father's father mate of enderberries. And, cause hamster and hamster kinda sound similar. So for a hogzilla, you could say your mother, mother was, was a hamster and, and your, your father smelled of wild boar. And I even mentioned something else, cause, a lot of people have heard of, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, the two villains, Rocksteady the Rhino and Bebop the Warthog. I mentioned that there were two pairs of rhinos and warthogs friends with each other in real life too. First pair, there's Omni the Rhino and Digby the Warthog, and there's another one, Tatenda the Rhino and Pogs the Warthog, so rhinos and warthogs can be friends in real life too. And I also mentioned prehistoric pigs, the Antilodonts, and the biggest pig ever, Poland China hog named Big Bill. So there's a lot of huge pigs in it, so check it out. Hey, I'm here at Vernon Family Farm. I'm gonna do my next wild adventure episode about the pigs. And these are Mangalitsa pigs. They're domestic pigs, but they're a cross between domestic pigs from Hungary and European wild boars and Serbian breeds. And right now there's 11 of them here total. There's eight in this pen. They're small. There's a medium-sized white one right there. And there's two really big ones in that pen right there. And they really do kind of look like wild boars. I mean, they've got the fur of wild boars and in wild pigs, the snouts are long, and in domestic pigs, the snouts are short. These guys, their snouts look like they're probably in between. Probably um, not too long and not too short. These pigs are really big. They can get to the size of a car, a small car. But the largest pig ever was a Poland China hog named Big Bill. He died of a broken leg back in 1933, but it had nothing to do with his weight. He was nine feet long, stood five feet tall, and weighed two tons. And the smallest pig ever is a little Vietnamese pot belly pig named Millie. She's full grown, but she only weighs 10 pounds. Compare that to the largest pot bellied pig ever, which weighed 300 pounds. And by the way, at two tons, Big Bill was the size of an American buffalo. We're all just standing here, and the bisons are just sitting here. They're not attacking us. They don't. They don't see us as a, as a threat or mean us any harm. species of wild pig in the world is the wild boar, which can weigh up to half a ton. The smallest is the pygmy hog, just three feet long, a foot tall, and only weighing 30 pounds. And the warthog has... The warthog has... The longest tusks of any pig 
in the world. Its tusks are three feet long. And what's interesting is pigs actually go wilder quicker than any other domesticated animal. When domestic pigs escape from farms, they go wild in just weeks. Thousands of years to domesticate, but only weeks to revert. And reverting back from domestication to wild, that's called feral. And one type of feral pig are razorbacks. And razorbacks can sometimes be a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. And look how these pigs are wallowing in the mud. You see, pigs don't have sweat glands, so they can't sweat like we can. Now, when they're hot, they normally roll around in water. But when there's no water around, they'll settle for a mud puddle. <laughs> one huge pig that that was kind of similar to these pigs and to Razorbacks. It was a pig named Hogzilla, shot on June 17, 2004 by Chris Griffin. <laughs> and he and his boss Ken Holyoke said that Hogzilla was 12 feet long, 4 feet tall, 3 feet wide, and therefore 9.42 feet in girth, because remember the girth of a circle is always 3.14 times the width weighed one ton and had tusks three feet long. But, unfortunately though, when they dug up his body about six months after he was shot and killed, they found he was only nine feet long and only weighed 800 pounds. So he wasn't as big as Chris and Ken said he was, but he was still a giant. And he was killed at about seven years old. That's young for a hog as big as he was. That means he was born in 1997. And he was a cross between a domestic Hampshire and a wild boar. His mother was a Hampshire. Your mother was a hamster. And his father was a wild boar. And your father smelt of elderberries. Pigs have actually been around for 60 million years. They first appeared 60 million years ago, just 5 million years after the last dinosaurs went extinct. And there was one family of prehistoric pigs called Intelodonts. Intelodonts were giant prehistoric carnivorous pigs with huge teeth and jaws. Jaws that could open 90 degrees and could bite harder than a hippo or a crocodile. And, and not only that, the largest intilodont that ever lived was Dinohyus, also called Deodon, also known as the Terminator Pig, Terminator Hog. Dinohyus was 12 feet long, stood 7 feet tall, 4 feet wide, and therefore 12.56 feet in girth, and weighed 2 tons, the size of an American bison, and it lived here in North America about 30 million years ago. It was also the last intilodont ever because of its huge size, and what's interesting about pigs is that pigs can actually smell things 7 miles away, and 30 feet underground, and I've actually seen some wild pigs in Florida near the Kennedy Space Center. You know, just like in the cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Rocksteady the Rhino and Bebop the Warthog, there are some warthogs in real life that are friends with rhinos in real life. Like for example, there's one baby warthog named Digby who's friends with a black rhino calf named Omni. They first met each other when they were both five months old and they were friends for two years. Then they had to be separated. And there's another female baby warthog named Pogs who's friends with another male black rhino calf named Tatenda. They're both each a year old and Tatenda already weighs about half a ton. But of course when Tatenda grows up he'll weigh five tons. So he'll be ten times bigger than, than he is right now. And they, they, were also, they also used to be friends with a hyena pup named Sutsi, who, who was also a year old. Eventually, Tatenda and Pogs were released in a wildlife park, and they now live with a three-year-old female black rhino named Shanu. That was the one on pigs. The next one is on horses. And the horses are pretty cool, because I also mentioned some record-sized horses in the, in the show. Like, in the show, I'm, I go to, the, to a farm, a horse farm, and I've been horseback riding before, and I mentioned the two greatest horses in history. Um, I believe it was a shire named Samson, who, who was then renamed Mammoth, I think. And he was the largest and heaviest horse ever. And I also mentioned a Clydesdale horse named Poe, the tallest horse ever. And I even mentioned this, some hybrid equines, like the mule, of course, 
and we already know to create a mule, you gotta breed a female donkey with a female horse, but I also mentioned this, the opposite of a mule, a hinny. To create a hinny, you gotta do the opposite, breed a male horse with a female donkey, and I even mentioned some other hybrid equines. The Zorse, cross between a zebra and a horse. The Zoni, cross between a zebra and a pony. And the Zonkey, cross between a zebra and a donkey. And there's one Zorse named Eclisa. She is the most bizarre looking Zorse in the world. She looks like a mythical creature or a child's puzzle gone wrong, but she's entirely real. She's a two-toned, one-of-a-kind animal. So I had to mention her. And I even mentioned the smallest horse ever, Einstein. And you won't believe how small he is. So check it out. Hey, me again. I'm here at the UNH equine facility. And today I'm going to be doing my next Ben's Wild episode adventure about the horse. Now, as you can see, there's two horses behind me. There's one right there, another way back there. And one reason why I'm doing the horses is because I used to take horseback riding lessons when I was a kid, and my aunt is a vet and an expert on horses. There's different types of horses, and the largest and heaviest horse ever was a Shire horse named Samson. He was then eventually renamed Mammoth. He died back in 1846, and he weighed two tons. And the tallest horse ever is a Clydesdale horse named Poe. From hoof to head, he's 10 feet tall. And horses are measured in hands, and one hand equals four inches. So 10 feet tall would be 30 hands tall. Now I'm inside the barn and some other world record horses that I want to talk about. The smallest horse ever is a dwarf miniature horse named Einstein. He's full grown, but he only weighs six pounds. That's only the size of a newborn baby human. And the fastest horses ever are quarter horses. They're called quarter horses because they can sprint for a quarter of a mile. And the fastest one ever ran 60 miles an hour. That means it could run a quarter of a mile in just 15 seconds. And the oldest horse ever lived to be 62 years old. And the strongest horses ever can haul up to five times their body weight, which means a two-ton horse like Samson can haul 10 tons. Standing in front of another horse now, and what's interesting is horses have actually been around for 60 million years. They first appeared 60 million years ago, and that's just 5 million years after the last dinosaurs went extinct. And the very first horse ever was just a foot tall, only house cat size. So you, so you can now see how much bigger they've gotten over 60 million years from the very first horse ever, which was just a foot tall to giant modern-day horses like Ho, who's 10 feet tall. They got 10 times taller as they evolved. That's pretty amazing, actually. Relatives of the horse are ponies, donkeys, zebras, and believe it or not, rhinos and tapirs, too. Rhinos and tapirs, they, their feet are very similar to the ancestors of horses. The early horses had hoof-like toes, and so do rhinos and tapirs. And zebras, are smaller than horses and as we all know they live in the wild and today there are three different types of zebras the plain zebra the grevis and the mountain and the grevis is the biggest of the three species it's recognizable because of its long thin stripes and its big ears a full-grown adult male grevis can stand six feet tall and can weigh half a ton this horse right here is named snowy as you can see he's sniffing me right now and he's a male horse because if you look in his mouth, he's got canine teeth. Only male horses have canines. And the females don't. But of course, you've got to be careful. Horse teeth can cause flesh ripping wounds. Although horses are herbivores, they can still deliver a nasty bite, which is why you have to feed them like this. There's actually five different types of hybrid equines. Like the most famous, of course, is the mule. To create a mule, you gotta breed a male donkey with a female horse. 
But if you do the opposite, breed a male horse with a female donkey, you get a hinny. And if you breed a male zebra with a female horse, you get a zorse. Male zebra with a female pony, a zoni. And a male zebra with a female donkey, a zonkey. And what's cool about mules and hinnies is that they have 63 chromosomes. That is less than a horse with 64 and more than a donkey with 62. And they both have the speed and stamina of horses and the intelligence of donkeys. Of donkeys. Of donkeys. Most sources have chestnut fur, but there's one source named Eclisa. She's got a white body, but her head and rump on her um, left side, I think, look just like that of a zebra. And the reason why <clears throat> is because Eclisa's patchwork may be a clue. The color of the zorse may be dictated by the color of the horse. And in this case, Eclisa was crossed with a zebra and a horse that has spots, like this horse behind me. And today, Eclisa lives with a pony named Pedro. Did you know that horses have the biggest eyes of any land mammal? A horse eye is even bigger than an elephant eye, and their eyes are twice as big as our eyes, and... Their manes look a lot different from a zebra's mane. Because you know how most horses' manes flop down over to one side? Well, a zebra mane stands straight up in the air. And I mentioned earlier that zebras are smaller than horses, and they're also slower than horses, too. Zebras only run 50 miles an hour. So the movie Racing Stripes kind of got it wrong. It's interesting. I said horses run 60 miles an hour. A horse's stride is 30 feet long. That's the same length as the stride of a giraffe or the stride of a cheetah, even though their legs are all different lengths and even though they all run different speeds. Like, for example, a giraffe's legs are six feet long. That's four times longer than the legs of a cheetah. And giraffes run 40 miles an hour, horses run 60, and cheetahs run 80. But all of their strides are all 30 feet long. All right, I'm back where I, where I started with this horse again. And I said horses haul five times their body weight, which means, like I said, a two-ton horse hauls 10 tons. Compare that to an elephant, which only hauls twice its body weight. That means a 14-ton elephant can haul 28 tons. So when it comes to hauling things, an elephant is almost three times stronger than a horse. So basically, you could say that an elephant has almost three horsepower, because that's how horsepower works. But pound for pound, a horse is stronger than an elephant because remember horses haul five times their body weight and elephants they only haul twice their body weight now i'm on emory farm and i'm in front of two donkeys right now named maggie and claire now like i said earlier donkeys are relatives of the horse and as you can see they're small and they've got bigger ears and like i said back at the horse farm they're smarter than horses, and they're also slower than horses. One reason why is because, unlike horses who tend to run away from their predators, donkeys will stand and fight. They can also be pretty stubborn, too. They'll sometimes disobey their owners, and the largest and heaviest donkey ever weighed one ton, and the mule, the hybrid of a donkey and horse, just want to let you know, the very first cloned equine ever was a mule named Idaho Jem. Last time I saw him on TV, he was three years old. I don't know how old he is right now, and I don't even know if he's still alive. But I do know that he lived with another cloned mule named Idaho Star. And both Idaho Jem and Idaho Star are racing mules. And of course, the very first cloned animal ever was Dolly the Sheep. And I think... Idaho Star might have been the second cloned equine ever. I've never seen a nutria rat in person before, but I'm sure they might live around here. And it was kind of cool because I have seen them on TV. I even heard about this so-called Ratzilla that was seen not far from New York City. 
and I mentioned this in the show. At first they thought it was a giant monster sized brown rat, but then they found out it was actually a Nutri rat. And I don't blame them because Nutri rats, however, despite their names, they look like rats, but they're not. But they are rodents. And they're sometimes considered pests. And, but anyway, that one was cool because it was my very first episode. So here it is, take a look. Today on Ben's Wild Adventure, I'm going to be talking about the Nutria rat and the mink. I'm going to start with the Nutria rat. The Nutria rat is a type of rodent. It's also known as the river rat and also known as the koi poo. But despite its name and the way it looks, it's actually not really a rat. It's actually more closely related to beavers and muskrats. Because like beavers and muskrats, they swim, they eat wood, and they build lodges and dams. They're pretty large rodents. They can weigh up to 40 pounds. And they have ravenous appetites. They can eat up to 30% of their body weight in food every day. Which means they need to have 12 pounds of food a day. That's the equivalent of a 200 pound human eating 60 pounds, which is the weight of 240 hamburgers every day. And some people even make coats out of Nutria rat fur. And others who consider them as pests will sometimes shoot them and feed them to alligators. So obviously one of the enemies of the Nutria rat is the alligator. There was once a um, large rodent found outside New York City. It weighed 15 pounds. They thought it was a giant monster-sized brown rat at first, but then it turned out to just be a Nutria rat. And brown rats, by the way, are only two feet long and only weigh three pounds. Compare that to the average mouse, which only weighs an ounce. I'm here at the Great Bay Wildlife Refuge. You can, if you're looking for Nutria rats, you can find them in places like this. Nutria rats like to live in ponds, lakes, rivers, streams, anywhere where there's fresh water. You see, they're sim they behave like their cousins, the beavers and muskrats, because like I said, they swim and they build lodges and dams. So they spend more of their time in the water than on land, because that, they're aquatic rodents. They have webbed feet that helps them swim. They can hold their breath for long periods of time. For example, a beaver can hold its breath for 15 minutes. And also, building lodges and dams keeps them safe from predators. Well, the third episode we did was about the blue whale. To do that, we went to the Seco Science Center because it's near the ocean and blue whales live in the ocean. And I used to go to, to camp there at the Seco Science Center. And I used to volunteer there too when I was younger. When I when I when I when I got older, I started to volunteer there. And now I'm kind of too old to volunteer there now, but I still like to visit that place. That place is really cool because there's a lot of animals inside, marine animals like a touch tank, and that was a good spot to film about the blue whale and. As we all know, the blue whale is the biggest animal that's ever lived. And I've looked this up. The biggest one ever was 120 feet long, which is about the length of a jumbo jet, and was 20 feet tall from top to bottom, the top of its back to the bottom of its belly, which is like as tall as a giraffe. That's also as tall as a two-story building. And they also weighed 230 tons, which is as heavy as the Statue of Liberty in New York City, and that's absolutely amazing. The fact that they can get that big, weigh that much, because there's no other animal in history that weighs as much as the Statue of Liberty, not even the biggest dinosaur. So here it is. Today on Ben's Wild Adventure, I'm going to be talking about the largest animal that has ever lived, the blue whale. The blue whale, is bigger than even the biggest dinosaur that ever lived. The largest one ever recorded was 120 feet long, as long as a jumbo jet, was 20 feet tall from top to bottom, as tall as a giraffe, and weighed 230 tons. And believe it or not, that's as heavy as the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Like most baleen whales, they need to eat about 
4% of their body weight in food every day. So a 230 ton blue whale eats 9.2 tons of food a day. They also eat 3 million calories a day. That's like a human eating 10,000 hamburgers. And like most whale species, their mouths are about 20% of their body length. So a 120 foot blue whale has a mouth 24 feet long. Here we are at the Seacoast Science Center. Now, although no blue whales ever come this close to shore, they are, like I said, they are still far out at sea. And one amazing thing I forgot to mention about the blue whale is that the blue whale's tongue is so massive, 50 people could stand on it. <laughs> Blue whales would tend to live far out at sea, way out there in the Atlantic Ocean. They, are, they do live in the North Atlantic, and they even live in the South Atlantic too. They'll sometimes swim from the North Pole to the South Pole and back. They go, usually spend their time in cold water in the summer, and then in the winter they migrate to warm water to give birth. Most whales do that actually. Blue whales tend to eat small shrimp-like creatures called krill and zooplankton, but amazingly, they don't eat fish. Not all baleen whales eat fish. <coughs> and like most whales, they're social animals. They live in pods. And on whether or not the male or female is the leader of the pod, I think depends on the size of the sex. In tooth whales, the males are bigger than females, so I would imagine the leader of a pod of tooth whales would be the alpha male, but in baleen whales it's the opposite. The females are bigger than the males, so in a pod of baleen whales, like the blue whale, I would imagine the leader of the pod would probably be the alpha female. Most modern day baleen whale species, and in prehistoric baleen whale species, scientists have estimated that there is about one ton per foot. However, in a blue whale, being 120 feet long, it weighs 230 tons, so that's almost two tons per foot. These are the job, these are the bones of a fin whale, the second largest animal ever. They're from an adult male who was about 60 feet long. And these are the jaw bones, and as you can see, they're really big. They're like twice as tall as I am. And one, there's one amazing thing. Once in Europe, in medieval times, some people found the jaw bone of a whale. It was so extraordinary, they thought it was the rib of a dragon called Smock. They also found the femur of either an elephant or a mammoth with it, and the skull of a woolly rhino. They all thought they were dragon bones, but they're not. These look like ribs, but they're actually jaw bones. This is part of the skull. Over here are some of the back vertebrae. Those are the ribs. Those are the shoulder bones where the flippers attach. And over here, this is where the tail fluke would be. You know, even though the blue whale is far bigger than Argentinosaurus, Argentinosaurus's back vertebrae can be far bigger than a blue whale's. Some future episodes I want to do. The next one I want to do is about the eagle, <coughs> the bald eagle, the bird of America. I could even mention how its competitor was the wild turkey, because initially they wanted the wild turkey to be the bird of America, but then they chose the bald eagle. And I, I'm going to be mentioning that there's all kinds of different eagles, including the largest eagle in the world, the harpy eagle, and the largest eagle that ever lived, the harpy eagle's extinct ancestor, the Hass eagle, and, and some other future episodes I want to do, the crow, the raven, and I also want to do a lot more animals around the world, and some animals that lived in the past too, like when I eventually do one about animals that live in the past, the first, the first episode that I want to do about an animal living in the past is Tyrannosaurus rex, because believe it or not, that's actually my favorite animal, alive or extinct. I love all animals, alive or extinct, real or not. And T-Rex is my favorite of all animals that are alive or extinct or real or not. And because a lot of people love T-Rex because it's the most famous of all dinosaurs. I definitely want to do an episode about that. Maybe I could even do an episode on 
a creature that doesn't exist, like the dragon. And I would also like to do maybe one on elephants, the biggest land animal in the world. I could even mention the most famous elephant ever in that episode, Jumbo. And he, he's the most famous elephant ever because he was the tallest elephant ever. And the largest and heaviest elephant ever is the one, the statue of the one in the Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. I've been there many times. So I'd like to add that. I, I've got to mention that. And there's a lot of information I know about elephants that I could definitely talk about. And I probably might also want to do one on the killer whale because it's like the ocean equivalent of humans on land. It's the king of the sea, the top predator of all the world's oceans combined. And I definitely want to mention that it's the great white shark's only enemy, which is really cool because a lot of people are afraid of great white sharks, like from the movie Jaws. But the fact that the great white shark has only, has just one enemy, the killer whale, that would make it even more terrifying. And, um, my goal, my goal actually is to get a lot of people to love animals as much as I do. And I'm sure anybody out there who loves animals as much as I do will watch them. So anyway, thanks for watching. You can check out my show on YouTube. And this is Ben Mon saying, so long.